To live deep in the jungle requires a special knowledge of your surroundings, the art and craft of living using the world around us that I call bushcraft. It's a way of life that's still very much alive with the Equana of Venezuela, who I spent the last week with. But bushcraft also gives us the skills to travel through unsport places like this and to sense the jungle in all its vastness. Today I'm going to follow a traditional trading route that links the Iquana people deep in the rainforest with another group of people called the Pomon who live on the edge of the rainforest where it turns to savannah. I'm in the Amazon jungle in Venezuela, near the Brazilian border. My route takes me to the edge of the jungle, to a land fit for dinosaurs, past some of the most spectacular scenery on Earth. Today's program celebrates journeys through this incredible environment, from the earliest explorers drawn by the natural history of the jungle to lovers separated by the greatest river on earth. My journey is a personal journey. Trekking through the jungle is a fabulous experience. It reduces life to its important elements. But when you walk out towards the edge of the jungle, in many ways, you're traveling through time. A snapshot, if you like, of all the forces working on bushcraft. In some ways, my journey started last week. I just spent 10 days deep in the forest at the start of this trading route with some very special people from the Aquana village of Kanarakuni. The place they live in is so remote that they rely on bushcraft, their knowledge of the natural world and how to use it to provide everything they need to live, food, shelter, medicine. For centuries, they relied on trading paths to obtain the few things their surroundings couldn't provide. Like so many indigenous groups around the world, I found their way of life so appealing. It's something that starts when they are born and stays with them all their life, so I was just as struck by the skill of the children on the water as I was by the incredible depth of knowledge of Luis, one of the village elders. At every turn, either he, Saul or Benito would want to stop and show me some plant or leaf they have a use for. It was wonderful to be able to spend time with them, as it meant I could appreciate not just their skills and knowledge, but I could learn a little about them as people. Despite the huge language barrier, we developed a great understanding, and they've given me memories that I will cherish for the rest of my life. Of course, I'm not the first person to spend time with the Aquana. Charles Brewer Carias is Venezuela's most famous explorer. He lives in the hills overlooking Caracas, but he's explored more of this country than anyone else. His list of exploits is endless, and he's even had plants and animal species named after him. Like most people who spend any length of time in wilderness areas, Charles learned the value of bushcraft from his first forays into the jungle 40 years ago when he first spent time with the Equana. I was in the hands of these extraordinary Indians, the Makiritari or Yequana Indians. And with them I, I learned everything about the jungle and to read, I would say, the jungle and to understand that the jungle is like a huge supermarket, but a supermarket with Chinese signs, and if you don't read the Chinese in the super, Chinese supermarket, you are lost. But these people taught me how to identify every tree, everything, and then I could live uh, like being in my place. Actually, in my first experience with the Equana, it was not a very good experience the first days, 
after I could talk something, one of my friends, he got very serious and he was mad with me, I don't know why, and say, do you know how to make canned beans and canned sardines? I say, well, you make can, you put the sardines there, you cook them, and you wait till they're very hot and then you seal them so there's no way they will corrupt. Well, let's do, let's do one. Let's make a can. Oh, I, I, I don't know. And to make an aluminum pan, yes, we have here oxide. And it could be done if we have the, enough electrical power. So we couldn't do it. No. Do you know how to weave a basket or your hammock? No. If you don't know how to take care of your food, if you, don't know how, if you do not know how to make your things to cook, if you don't know how to make your bed, how it is that you are alive, you do not deserve to be alive. You are like a little boy among us. That's it. This is the way I was in the, in the society, the lowest rank. But I start to learn everything to be considered a soto, a person. And I learned the language. I even learned to make the flutes and to play the flutes of it with their music. The most rewarding thing is one of the Indians, the same one, and he say, you know, Charles, you are like, you are almost a man now. You are almost a soto. I would consider you my, my, my brother. That was an incredible situation.